here at Lenore Rhine, here to welcome you to the introductory press conference for the 24th coach in the history of Lenore Rhine football, Coach Doug Sosha. Today you'll hear from our president, Dr. Fred Witt, our vice president for athletics, Kim Pate, and then closing out will be Coach Sosha. So without further ado, I'd like to welcome to the stage our president, Dr. Fred Witt. Tommy? What time is it? Bear time! What time is it? Bear time! Absolutely. Good afternoon. It's always a great day to be a Lenoran Bear, but it's particularly special today as, as we introduce our 24th head coach in the over 100 years storied and rich history of Lenoran football. Interesting, the, tw the 24th coach in the year 2024. That's pretty good karma. Uh, I do want to publicly thank Coach Mike Jacobs and his staff for the outstanding job they did here at Lenore Ryan. Uh, we miss him, uh, but at the same time, uh, we wish them great success, and we'll be pulling for those bears uh, during their quest at Mercer. Mm -hmm. mm. Uh, you know me. I got to say this, though. I do think Mercer could save some money from hiring search firms and because we're the ones grooming their coaches, right? <laughs> so maybe they should, they should uh, pay us a little bit of a fi fi finder's fee. You know, unlike businesses and industry, a lot of folks think of uh, things moving pretty slow in higher education. Sometimes people say, you guys are like paralysis because you overanalyze everything. Paralysis by analysis. Well, not this time. This was a challenge. Uh, we learned that Coach Jacobs was accepting the position at Mercer really beyond what Kim and I thought was the critical time. I think he had turned down a couple of positions before Christmas, got through the holidays, and we felt pretty good. And we were actually at the NCAA convention and got a text. And it's like, uh-oh, going for an interview. And so um, she said, do you think Mercer will come after him? I said, I don't think so. They wouldn't come after for a second coach. It doesn't look great, but that's okay. So we had to go to work. Uh, I think Mike uh, let us know it was late Wednesday night, around January 19th. I think we met with the team the next morning. And almost within one week, she went through 150 applications. Probably talked to over 40 people, Zoom maybe with 30. And we brought in five candidates. Uh, and were able to find our head coach almost within one week of when we learned about the announcement. That's pretty incredible. Um, and you know, in doing that, just to give you a little history, you know, when we hired Coach Chronic in 2017, uh, we came off some couple of dismal years. So the pool wasn't that great. Uh, but we got the right one, and all it took was one. Then the next time around, when we hired Coach Jacobs, I think we were coming off 25 and three, two-year record, and we'd kind of gotten some attention. Uh, been to two Super Regionals, uh, had a good record, won a couple conference championships. Good team, but was it a good program? Were we aligned? And we had a much better pool, but mostly assistant coaches. A couple of head coaches here and there, but we got a good one, someone who had taken a team to the Final Four. This time around, it was quite different because since we hired Coach Jacobs with two different, and, and Coach Chronic, two different uh, coaches in the last six or so years, 57 and uh, 12, I think, that's pretty amazing. So it's like Lenore is not just a good team, it's an outstanding program and it attracted a lot of individuals, a lot of really good coaches. No question, I think we were one of the top four or five positions out there at NCAA Division II. And that's what we aspire to be. Uh, and it was a challenge. We actually focused in, I think, Kim's team on, on head coaches. And we had folks from NAIA, Division I, head coaches, Division II, and Division III, all interested in this job. Uh, it would blow your mind if you saw some of the names. Uh, and so, Doing it and doing it as efficient as we could was pretty incredible on her and her team's part. Uh, we didn't have a clue. We didn't like we had somebody that we were planning to come to campus 
and they're all outstanding coaches, all playoff teams in their divisions. But we got the top choice that we wanted, and we're very excited about that. Um, what I wanted to do is recognize real quick, I, I don't know if Kim was going to do this, but the, you know, each of the coaches came in about a four-day period, and it was a little bit of a circus. You had some interviewing in the press box, some interviewing at the alumni house, some getting off the plane at the, at the airport and trying to manage that so we could do it as efficient as possible. I know the search committees, Justin Hay, Michael Flicker, Katrina DeVore, all out of athletics, Avery Staley, our vice president for DEI, Josh Ring, our faculty athletic representative, Ingrid Smith, who's head of our Bears Club, Coach Chris Ramirez, our head baseball coach, and Coach Greg Paradine, head of our men's lacrosse program. Some really good team up for the search committee. Hank McCrory, Johnny Moretz, Andy Anderson all interacted with the candidates at lunch. They also met Leah Beth Hubbard in missions, our representatives from financial aid, Trent Caldwell, our strength coach, Sarah Lightfoot, our uh, athletic trainer for football. I probably spent four hours both in Zooms and in person, and Donna spent a couple hours with every spouse. So uh, they, uh, they went through quite an interview. It was very thorough, but it was very efficient. And so I'm excited that we got, I always say, a first-round draft choice. We got a lottery pick. And I'm very excited about not only Coach Doug Socia, but his family, his staff, the whole package. What we were looking for was not just someone who would take our team and win and go even further, but how do they align with our values? Our values of leaning into the student athletes, caring about them as individuals, our values of academics, community service, doing things on and off the field the right way, and making everyone around them better. That's really what it's all about here at Lenore Ryan. And in summary, I, I will uh, mention a quote that uh, was written by Chuck Bittner in the NCAA Division II. He's a national writer. I thought I'd written it down, but let me tell you what he said right after the hire. And he can be pretty critical. Uh, he's a national writer. This is remarkable work by Lenore Ryan. Coach Jacobs resigns less than two weeks ago. Actually, it was about eight days. And the Bears already have a coach and staff in place before signing day with a resume that could command D1 attention. Pretty incredible. Good job, LR. And I want to tell you, the person behind that and responsible is our NCAA Division II Athletic Director of the Year, Kim Pate. Her work in making this happen <laughs> has, uh, has been truly outstanding. And I think if you look around, you can see the quality of coaches we've hired. And today, I'm just as excited. If Lenoran University is going to win a national championship in football, it's going to be this coach and this staff, no doubt in my mind. Kim, would you please come up and introduce the coach? I think I've told everybody, I hate following Dr. Wed. <laughs> but it is a great day to be a bear. Good afternoon. Thank you for joining us today to welcome new leadership and a new era of LR football between the bricks. I want to express my deep appreciation to President Witt for his support and dedication to the search process, as well as his continued commitment to provide an exceptional student athlete experience. I also want to thank the search committee and particularly Justin Hay and Katrina DeVore. Where are you at? Justin, where's Katrina? <laughs> Rock stars. I'm not sure they slept for that seven-day period. I want to pay special recognition to our football team, our football players. Where are you guys at? Raise your hands. All around. I'm really proud of these young men for how they've led through this transition and for the trust that they extended myself and the administration as we navigated the search process. As I assured them, we would not settle for anything but the very best. And I'm confident that we've hired one of the top coaches and leaders of men in college football. 
I want to welcome Coach Sosha's family to the Bear family. His wife, Carrie, daughters, Cameron, Anna, and Monica, as well as sons, Cade, Colby, and Gabriel, who are here with us today. Cade couldn't be here, but I know he's probably watching the stream. So we welcome you guys to our Bears family. I am blown away with the staff that Coach Sosha has brought with him and has put together already. Um, we look forward to you and your families immersing yourself into both the Hickory and LR community. Thanks for uh, investing in our student athletes and everything that you're going to do to make an impact in their lives in this program. Well, as Dr. Witt said, LR football has a rich and storied tradition at Lenore Ryan as we just completed our 104th season of football. The history of our program is revered by our alumni, our campus, our community, and has garnered a reputation of national success, distinguished most recently by advancing to the NCAA semifinals and winning both the SAC Divisional and Conference Championship titles this past fall. In, in, in 2018 and 2019, our team advanced to the NCAA quarterfinals, and Lenore Ryan has won eight SAC championship titles and earned seven berths to the NCAA football playoffs in the past 12 seasons, including an NCAA national championship appearance in 2013. We've produced three NFL players in the past four years, including this guy pictured right behind me. And there's no doubt that we feel like we have something really special here at Lenore Ryan. Our vision for LR football is to be a perennial conference championship, a nationally contending program that excels both on and off the field, a program that our alumni, our campus, our community will continue to take great pride in while providing our young men a top-notch experience that will propel them for life. Well, with that being said, it is my special privilege to formally introduce the new Lenore Ryan University head football coach. The LR football program will enter its 105th season under the leadership of Doug Sosha, who becomes the 24th coach in the history of the program. Coach Sosha brings 27 years of coaching experience, including 13 as a head coach. He spent the past seven years as the head coach at Kaiser University, where he started the program from scratch and built the Seahawks into national champions and one of the top collegiate programs in the country. During Sosha's tenure, the Seahawks accumulated a 55 and 15 overall record, producing a 916 winning percentage in conference. Folks, they lost one game in five years in conference. Coach Sosha led the Seahawks to five straight conference titles and five consecutive NAI playoff appearances, including a semifinal appearance in 2020 and back-to-back -back national championship appearances in 22 and 23. Pretty impressive, right? The Seahawks garnered national recognition over the past four years, being ranked as high as third in the AFCA coaches poll this past year. Following the 2023 campaign, Sosha was named the AFCA NAIA Coach of the Year after winning the Seahawks' first national championship in program history. He was also named the Sun Conference Coach of the Year four times during his six seasons at Kaiser. Prior to serving as the head coach at Kaiser, Sosha served as the NFL Offensive Quality Control Coach for the Buffalo Bills and assisted with, the coaching, with coaching the running backs, scout team defense, and was responsible for the organization and distribution of the offensive game plan. Prior to his time in the NFL, Sosha spent nearly a decade at the high school level, including the last five as a head coach, where he won a state championship title, a state runner-up title, two independent championships, and three district titles. He was recognized as the 2015 Sun Sentinel Coach of the Year and 2014 Gold Coach of the Year. And there's more. Sosha also spent five years in the Division I collegiate coaching ranks as the recruiting coordinator and wide receivers coach at the University of Buffalo. As a player, Sosha competed as a Division II student athlete at Mesa State as a defensive back. Well, as you can see, Doug Sosha brings an impressive record of success. Coach Sosha has won at every level of football and brings proven leadership from his time in the NFL, Division I, high school, and most recently, Kaiser University. When we embarked on this search, we were looking for an experienced and inspiring leader who not only would bring an exciting brand of football, 
but that knows what it takes to win at the highest level and is capable of taking LR football back to a national championship. We were seeking a coach who understands how to develop and sustain a championship culture, who also genuinely cares and invests in the development of student athletes and would position his players to be successful both on and off the field. It became clear through our search process that Doug Socha was the ideal candidate to lead our program forward. As we look to build our re on our recent success and to continue to position LR football at the highest level, he is a proven strategic leader who values people and knows how to build and sustain culture. He aligns with our commitment to developing champions for life. It was evident that Doug's passion and drive was about more than football and championships. He genuinely cares about developing young men and helping them reach their potential. He is a tireless worker and tenacious and talented recruiter who champions his players' success both on and off the field. I'm confident that Doug will bring high expectations for the program and inspire a bold vision to build a nationally contending program that will continue to make Bear Nation very proud. Well, as we embark on a new era of LR football between the bricks, please join me in offering a warm Bears welcome to our new head football coach, Doug Socha, as he comes forward to share some remarks after we present him with a commemorative LR football in Jersey. Doug Socha. It's been incredible, you know. I think that's an, probably an understatement, you know. Just this this welcome here and and, and, and what I've been able to, to to see this last, you know. Really, it's been 14 days, but in, in this last six seven days here in, in Hickory and here on the LR campus. So th this has been uh, a tremendous few days, and, and there are so many thank yous. I think I could stay up here, you know, pretty much for a long long time with all these thank yous, but. I, it's got to start with President Witt and his wife Donna. Uh, I, I, I appreciate it. You know, I spent 90 minutes on a Zoom meeting, you know, about two weeks ago on a on a Saturday afternoon, and it was an incredible conversation. And then prior to that, you know, Kim Pate, you know, w w with a Zoom, and um, you know, another phone call, another 60, 70 minutes on the phone, and you know, and, and she's hit me with questions, and I'm hitting her, and. and and it was just, I, I could tell right then, I went home and told my wife, I said, this is going to be something unique. This is going to be something special. Um, so without them, you know, on the, on the front end of this, it's been incredible. And then I come to Hickory and, I, and the search committee. And, and, and the people I met on the search committee were absolutely incredible. Um, you know, they asked me questions and, and they, they allowed me to ask a few questions. Um, but they were incredible in this process. You know, and I'm certain I could probably forget a few, but certainly Justin Hay and Katrina were right there at the forefront answering our questions, helping us. And then since we've been on, on campus, just helping us get settled in and, you know, able to bring some coaches here and hire them and, and get settled in. So they've been tremendous. So thank you. Um, Andrew Stafford, you know, he's got us ready for tomorrow with compliance and our national signing day. That's, that's going to be bigger than today, I promise you that. You know, and obviously it's going to be about the players in the building, but national signing day is a big one. So I want to thank him. Miles Kendrick's been tremendous. Will Hornsby in this transition. Alex has been a great job. Trent Caldwell and his staff in, in the interview and just seeing the alignment <clears throat> of what I expect and, and, and how our, our philosophies are so well aligned. Um, we're going to work really well together. And I had a chance to meet his, uh, his daughter last night, and, and they, ran, they ran around with my boys last night, so I think it's going to be really good. Uh, Flick, Sarah, and the training staff have been incredible. Um, and, and, and I'm sure there's, there's a number of more people that I've met. And, uh, you know, actually I had to meet with Justin Hay yesterday and, and kind of go through a list of, of people um, just to, to make sure I was, you know, 
seeing things straight with who I was meeting and making sure everyone in the community, because it's been incredible this last few days. Um, my parents and my brother and sister are, are home, you know, in California. They're watching this right now, so got to thank them. My family's here, uh, starting with my wife. She's really the real head coach of my family, and, and she's been a tremendous inspiration. And I can tell you right now, she's all in. So I'll tell you a story. So we're here. We interviewed for about 10 hours on a Wednesday. And um, they, they, they got us around. But we went from about noontime until 10 o'clock that night. And, and, and at some point later in the evening, probably near the tail end, we had finished up dinner. We toured the facility. I, I wore Kim out with some questions. And, and it was really good. And, and we get back to the hotel. And she's like, we got to do this. She's all, this is incredible. We have to do this. And, I, and I, I said, you realize they have to offer us the job first. So <laughs> just, uh, we'll be good. So incredible. You'll get to meet her. You'll get to see her around. She's all in uh, on, on, on what we're doing here. My daughters are here. Cameron, my oldest daughter, Anna and Monica. Uh, Cameron's probably the best coach in our family. So sorry, Cade, who's out in Hawaii right now coaching football. Um, but they're all here today. My little guys here, uh, Colby and G, Gabriel. I think Colby has met just about every single person in the athletic building yesterday. I think he went to breakfast with players and coaches. And I think Col Colby probably knows more names than I do right now. But uh, those guys are fired up. And I know that at some point, maybe 10 days ago, when I saw the boys you know, fighting and arguing, you know, I'm the Bears. I want to be the Bears. You know, they're, they're arguing in the living room. I knew it was a good sign. Um, so you'll, you'll get to know those guys. So uh, tremendously uh, honored to be here. And, and my son, my oldest son, who, who's Cade, he's, he's in Hawaii. He's watching right now, uh, probably getting ready to run out to spring practice. But, uh, you know, pretty uh, excited, you know, for us here, for no doubt about it. So um, I have to say thank you to the, to the Kaiser University leadership and, and, and the opportunity that they gave me seven years ago to come in and be, have an opportunity to build that program from scratch, you know, from Dr. Kaiser and his family uh, to the president, Dr. Vaughn, Peter Crescido, uh, the athletic director I worked with, my staff there. And I have to thank the players. I have to thank the players that I coached at Kaiser because they gave us everything they had. And uh, certainly uh, they, they were pumped for us. There's guys on our staff that came from the last place, and, and, and so they were really excited, and, and they, they knew what this was going to be about. So I have to thank them. Um, and then I want to thank the players here. You know, if, obviously, about a week ago, I walk into a room, and, and I'm the stranger, and, and I walk in with our defensive coordinator, Robbie Owens, and you know, here it is. And, and, and I understand the challenges of, of change and the challenges of you know, routine and what you want to see, but uh, they've been tremendous, and, and I appreciate these players. I've, I've enjoyed getting to know them and watch them work out and, you know, walk around campus and see them interact. And that was one of the questions that I asked in the interview. I think it was the only question they allowed me to ask at the end of one of the phases was, I wanted to know what you guys thought and what the campus community thought of the football team. And that was really important to me. And, and I wanted to know what I was dealing with. And, and, and I have it all written down. And you know, the words of you know, engaged, respected, hardworking, you know, leaders on campus. And, and that's what, it's what I wanted to hear. It's what I wanted to hear. So I thank those guys. Uh, you know, I'm going to dive into them. I want them to dive into our staff and me. And, and, and that's why I'm here for those guys. But uh, they've been tremendous in that. Uh, I want to take some time now to, to introduce some coaches uh, that are in the building. And, um, some came with me from Kaiser, and then obviously there are some others that, uh, you know, that have helped us through the transition and a great job, and then there's some guys that are, uh, are going to be around with us. So Robbie Owens will be our defensive coordinator. Uh, him and Robbie and I go back about 28, 29 years. Uh, there's probably not a week that goes by that we haven't been on the phone. We played college football together. So. We are very well aligned. Uh, we are best friends from, from pl our playing days. And um, just, just I'm so happy that he's coming. And, and, and uh, you know, he's a big piece of this thing. And, and you'll get to know Robbie really well. And, and you'll see us play uh, really well on defense. Justin Hilliker is our defensive line coach, special teams coach. Um, so 
I probably didn't know his name until this interview process because I've only called him Hilly for the last 15, 20 years. So that is Hilly. I've known him for a long time um, you know, in the state of Florida. He's, he's worked on our staff, and we've worked together really well. He's a versatile coach. He started out on offense with us, then he was special teams, then he's gone to defense. He's just a ball coach, and he's going to demand the most. I'm fired up to have Hilly here. Nick Vagnone will be our linebackers coach and recruiting coordinator. Okay. Nick has eaten, he, he's gone to Bojangles about six times since we've been in town, so I know that he is uh, pretty happy to be here. But uh, Nick has worked with us for two years, uh, came highly recommended two years ago. He, he took our, our linebackers to the next level and allowed us to play great on defense. Uh, he's a North Carolina native, and he is fired up to be here. Zach Owens will be a defensive assistant. He'll work... He'll work on the defensive side of the ball. He's an analytics guy. He's going to work with the defensive backs. He's going to help me in some of the operations. Uh, just a very well versatile guy. Uh, was a college athlete, played baseball, has been coaching for the last several years. Uh, really intelligent, fired up to have Zach here. Jelani Lord. <laughs> Will be our offensive line coach, run game coordinator. Uh, he's been with me for five, six years. Uh, you know, he, he was there as a part-time, and I, when I had a chance to elevate him, you know, he's a special guy. I've known him for a long time, and I've watched him work. I wanted him on my staff uh, prior to hiring him and, and at the last place and was able to get that done. Um, he's newly married, and his wife cannot wait to get here. Um, the other thing I'll tell you, just tell me if I'm going too long here, but, uh, <laughs> be, be, you know, when I got involved with this job, I, you know, I, I made – a point to I, I went and saw Robbie and his wife and I talked to Kelly and I went and saw Hilly and Karen and I talked to Karen I wanted to make sure that they were all in on this thing and they, they came here on the faith that I gave them um, and, and, and the, what I saw and, and about the people um, and then I went to then I think I had Jelani's wife come over to the school I said I got to talk with Allison before we take this job because I want to make sure she's all in on this you know and uh, and she's ready to go um, Stephen DeMeo will be our quarterbacks coach and passing game coordinator. <laughs> Stephen has had a tremendous start to his career. I actually coached Stephen in high school. And uh, it's, so it's pretty special to see such a young man, you know, go on this path. And he had a chance to play Division II football. He had some injuries and he got right into coaching. And he spent some time uh, with some really good coaches. We were able to get him from LSU. So he is going to be a special addition to the staff here on the offensive side of the ball. And then there's a couple guys here that, uh, that I've gotten to know since we've been in the building. And, and, and they're really well aligned with what we want to get done. Um, and, and I'm getting to know them. You know, and we had some dinner last night. And I'm get, trying to get these, to know these guys as much as I can. Nick Rosen will be on our staff as the tight ends coach. Rashad Yelding, I'm sure that's a familiar name, right? So. This, this guy's going to be a rising star in this profession. And just watching him work and, and then, you know, watching him play the game. And then you look in his pictures up and he's a 4.0. He's an academic All-American. And he's gotten right into work. He's been a tremendous resource. I think when you, you know, we've got to shoot for the stars with what we're going to recruit. But they're going to look like Rashad Yelding. Hopefully physically, too, right? <laughs> um, Guam Lee has done a tremendous job in this transition. Um, so he's been here. He's been here for a couple years. We've gotten to know each other. He's worked well with our defensive coaches so far. I, I, and I continue to want to get to know him. And, but he's been really good with our players and, and with this recruiting process as we approach signing day. I've been able to hire two excellent coaches that are, I don't believe they're here right now. Um, but they'll be introduced to us here shortly as they get through some paperwork. But uh, again, it's about people. You're going to hear me say people plus process equals winning and everything that we're going to do. And, 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 you know, my connection to our staff was huge because I know that they're going to be at the forefront with, with our players. And that was really important to me. So was able to hire a wide receivers coach uh, who's coached at a couple different levels, 1AA, Division II. He played at a high level. He was at the Buffalo Bills when I had a chance to work there. Um, I know what he stands for. I loved uh, my conversations with 
with him. He'll be joining us later this afternoon. And then our running backs coach is in route from, from Charlotte. Um, he's another guy that I've known since middle school. And, and, and I recruited him to, to the high school I was at. And um, I'm sure the Florida High School Athletic Association would probably be mad if I, they heard me say that. But um, D DJ Davis will be here shortly. Uh, he's been spending some time at Southern Illinois University. Uh, he's played the position. He was really competitive. He's a really good student. He's a great leader of men. And he stands for everything we're going to stand for. Um, and, I'm, and I'm certain there will be a couple other additions uh, as, we, as we continue to go. So. Um, I just wanted you guys to meet the staff. So, so why LR? You know, that, that could take me a long time here too, but I can tell you that, you know, as I looked at this place and, and, and had a chance to visit initially with, with the leadership here and then did our research and then the outside looking in, obviously they've competed at a high level, and then you see their GPA, and, and, and there's a lot of intrigue here. So the, the tradition of excellence is obviously, you know, very big in this whole thing. The high standard of academics and learning more about the academics on the interview and, and, and just the standard and you know what succeeds here and how we can push these student athletes to be the best that they can be because we want this thing to be the best decision that they make that they come to this university so when they graduate and they come back in 10 years and 20 years that this was a special place and I felt that. And then, I, then the alumni, you know, and, and I look at this alumni and, and, and I haven't met all of them certainly but you know my family and I I can tell you that I want you guys to wrap your arms around us and, and, and I want to hear the stories you know I want to hear all about your memories of, of what truly happened to, that made this place so special so you know the, the alumni is a piece of that uh, as well and then you're gonna hear me say it again people you know I went through the interview process and then I got here and, and, and we met everybody and you know, had a chance to do that. And then I'll, obviously I'm, I'm a week into this thing and, you know, it's been incredible. You know, just come and walk, getting around town and getting around campus and, and everybody's, you know, been so helpful, uh, helpful with this thing. Um, and then to see President Witt and, and Kim Pate have such a commitment to the student athletes and, and the student athlete experience. You know, so that gives me the, the best opportunity to be the best that I can be for our players and provide them with an environment where they can thrive and, and, and build lifelong memories and relationships. Um, and obviously, we're sitting in a very unbelievable facility. The stadium is incredible. Uh, as you'll walk around campus and see some incredible things, but the people are better. The people are better, and that's what's going to make the, that's what's made this thing so special. Uh, I believe in that. Um, so the people have been incredible with that. So with these three things, we talked about the tradition, we're talking about the people, and then the winning and the expectations. And I wanted that clearly defined as we, as, as we spoke throughout the process. And, and I understand what they are, and I embrace that, and, and we're going to win. And it's going to be bigger than football, but we're going to win in football. And we're going to win in the community. We're going to win in the classroom. And we're going we're gonna to get the best out of these players. I promise you that. Um, so. Thank you. so a little bit about my vision and, and commitment to football and, and football has done so much for me and, and coaches, you know, in my life, you know, and just I saw what it provided for me, um, you know, and, and, and that's really what I want. But again, you're going to hear me say it. I believe in people. I believe in the process that we're going to put in place, and we're going to win. And we're going to win in the classroom. We're going to do all those things. We'll have high expectations and standards. We will be demanding, and we want the best from our players. The best is the standard. And I talked to the team a little bit about being elite. And, and, and I know that it's, it's, it's on the wall, so we're, we're going to continue to go down that path. But I told the football team about a week ago, I said, elite is expensive. Elite takes massive investment. And we've got we've to work towards that on a daily basis with that. But with all these expectations and standards, it's going to start with trust. And, and it's going to start with trust and relationship. And I'm going to dive into these players' lives. I've already tried to dig into their lives. And, and guys have come see me. We met with 
the, the team, the leaders, the seniors, uh, the first night we were here, then we broke it up by position group into pods, and now these guys are coming around individually, and you know, we've got these note cards with all these players, you know, their faces, their background, their GPA. You know, we're trying to dive into these guys' lives and get to know them, but we've got to develop that trust and that relationship. We're going to have some fun. We're going to have some fun doing this. This is going to be a blast. And I'm going to make sure that this environment is fun and memorable for these players. I want our locker room to be the greatest brotherhood of their lifetime. I want to develop leaders. I'm here for the players. Our staff is here for the players. So what does that mean? What that means is my door is always open. I hope these guys have seen that this week. They can come in, sit on the couch. They can get treatment in my office. I know there's some, some of those things in my office. They need to come around and be around us. My door is always open. My phone is always on for these guys. We're going to be truthful and honest. I want their best, and I want to take them places maybe they didn't think they could go. Recruiting will start with character and talent because I know that's what's going to make up a great locker room. And that, that will, we will not compromise from that standard of how we're doing that. We'll be a tough and disciplined football team that makes LR and the community proud. So let's talk a little football. Let's talk between the bricks and what this thing's going to look like. You're going to see a team that plays with unbelievable effort. And that's, that's the character piece of it and the understanding of what that standard is going to look like. You're going to see a team that plays together and for each other. And when we close the locker room doors, that's what we are. When the coaches aren't in there and the football team's in there alone, that's who we are. And it starts with the character and the vision and the leadership uh, within the team. I want a player-led team. We're going to be a team that focuses on fundamentals. And when it comes down to it, blocking and tackling are right at the, the top of the list. We need to be a team that dominates the line of scrimmage. And I believe in that. Defensively, we're going to be aggressive. You're going to see it. I know our defensive players have already met with our staff a little bit about the, play, the, the design and the attacking style. We're going to mix up the looks on defense. We're going to play fast. I want to make the quarterback. Our coaches want to make the offensive coordinator on our opponent's team, the head coach, the offensive line coach. We want to make those guys uncomfortable. Offensively, we have to maximize our playmakers. And that's what it's about. It's going to be the distribution of the football to the players that can make plays. It's going to, be, have, to, going to have to be gritty and rugged because we're going to have to be able to be ready for any environment that we're presented with. Whether it's in our stadium or it's in the Midwest, it's not going to matter. We're not going to flinch. We're going to get after people with that. A very multiple scheme that forces the defense to defend the whole field. And then in the special teams, we're going to have complete team buy-in on that. And special teams is meant to be special. It's played with great technique and speed. We want it to be game-changing in the return game, fast and physical in all the other phases. I can tell you right now, I am incredibly proud. I'm honored. The words are not going to do this justice. My family and I are blessed for this opportunity. I promise you that myself, my family, my staff, We'll pour everything we have into the Lenore Rhine and the Hickory community. Go Bears. Thank you. That will conclude today's press conference. Uh, there's refreshments and snacks in the back. You can hang around and mingle with the new coaching staff. Members of the media, please meet Andy for the interview session with Coach in his office. Thank you all for coming out.